live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Well, welcome back everyone, live CUBE coverage here in San Francisco, California for VMworld 2019. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Dave, our 10 years continues. Day one of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Mark Lohmeyer, Senior Vice President, Cloud Platform Business Unit, and General Manager of the VMware Managed Cloud for VMware. Great to see you again. Great Thanks to see you on. too, yeah, thank you. So you got, you're managing all the VMware Managed Cloud on right. AWS and Dell EMC, right. which is, was a, a big part of today's keynote. Obviously a big part of your investments. So you, know, you always look at someone's commitment to something, mm -hmm. how they spend their resources and mm -hmm. their time. So give us an update. Obviously a lot of resources on the VMware side right. to make this run. Right what customers want. Give us an update on, on, the, on what's going on. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so first of all, VMware Cloud and AWS, I mean, um, we're really pleased with the momentum we're seeing for that in the marketplace. Uh, so we uh, compared what it looks like today versus a year ago, and we were here <laughs> talking about it a year ago, and um, we've increased the number of customers by 4X on the service. We've increased the number of VMs on the service by 9X. So it's kind of interesting, because it shows you that, you know, we're adding most new customers as well as existing customers are expanding their, um, their investment. Um, so that's great to see, right? And uh, it's powered by a lot of the compelling use cases. You might have heard Pat or others talk about, um, most notably cloud migrations. Um, you know, from an investment perspective, which is I think where you sort of started the question, uh, you know, significant investment from both uh, VMware as well as AWS into the service. Um, you know, we say it's jointly engineered and that is absolutely the case. I mean, we literally have hundreds of engineers that are optimizing the VMware software to be delivered as a service on top of the on top of the idea of best infrastructure. And that's a lot, just to get nuance on this point, yeah. because in the press coverage, I've seen all the press coverage from the Microsoft yeah. and the yeah. Google. This is different than just cloud foundation because you're talking about something completely different. This is jointly engineered. These are specific, unique things. Yeah, I mean, the, the sort of distinction I would sort of, um, uh, sort of uh, articulate there is that in the case of VMware Cloud on AWS, it's a VMware managed, operated, supported, delivered service. Right, so it's our engineers that are pushing the bits into production in AWS. It's our engineers if there's an incident that deal with, uh, you know, with, with, uh, with the situation. Um, you know, it's, it's literally a service operated by us. Uh, in the case of what we're doing with uh, Azure and GCP, uh, you know, first of all, from a customer perspective, what we heard them telling us is, hey, many customers are using Azure, many customers are using uh, GCP, and they'd like to have the ability to have that same VMware consistent software stack on those clouds. Um, but the operational model is different. So in those two cases, there's a partner called Cloud Simple, who's a VCPP partner, and they're taking our standard VMware Cloud Foundation software that customers use on-prem, and they are operating and delivering that as a cloud service on and, top and of those just cloud Just to review platforms. for our so VMware Cloud uh, on AWS and Outpost, yep. both your responsibility, yep. and there's two-way street there, yep. which yep. is rare with <laughs> Amazon. Usually it's a one-way street, in <laughs> my words, not yours. <laughs> but so, um, and, and so you manage both sides of that, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. That's so, right. Yeah. so you're happy to sell either one. Absolutely. Right, yep. and then the Dell EMC version is kind of the on-prem version of outposts, if you will. Is that a fair characterization? Yeah, yeah. Without so, the public cloud. Uh, yeah, right? I mean, that's, uh, absolutely. I think one of the interesting things was, you know, we've been in market now with the VMware Cloud on AWS for a couple years. And, uh, you know, it's going great, but one of the things we heard from customers was, hey, we sort of really like this VMware managed cloud model where you're taking all the heavy lifting of worrying about the life cycle of the VMware software, worrying about the you know, firmware upgrades to the hardware. You're taking that all off of our plate. But why can't we have that same cloud delivery model back on-prem, right? And so that was sort of the impetus for um, what we, we originally announced as Project Dimension, and now we're launching uh, this week as uh, VMware Cloud on Dell EMC. So all the benefits go to the Dell infrastructure Hardware. So, so I, I got to ask you. So, one of the attributes of, of those um, those solutions mm -hmm. is they're highly homogeneous, mm -hmm. right? And Andy Jassy made a big deal about that same control plane, right. same data plane. Right. So, mm -hmm. my question is, help me square the circle with multi-cloud, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. highly heterogeneous. <laughs> so, can I have? my cake and eat it too. Can I have this you know, unified vision of the world, this, this control, same compliance, yeah. governance, security, edicts, yeah. management, et cetera, and have all this heterogeneity? How yeah. does that 
cloud. Yeah, so I think, I mean, to me it starts from what the customer would like to do, right? And what, what we're seeing from customers is it's, it's increasingly a multi-cloud world, right? That expands, spans private cloud, public cloud, and edge. You're smiling when you uh, say that. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, now, yeah, now. Chaos <laughs> is an opportunity for VMware. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's a challenge for customers, right? For and sure, so yeah. if you look at how VMware is trying to help there, um, you sort of square the circle. I think the first piece is this idea of consistent operations, right? That we have these management tools that you can use to um, consistently operate those environments, whether they're based on a VMware-based infrastructure or whether they're based on a native cloud infrastructure, right? So if you look at our cloud health platform, for example, it's a great example where that service can help you um, under, get visibility to your cloud spend across different cloud platforms, also vSphere-based platforms, and can help you reduce that spend over time. So that's sort of what we refer to as consistent operations, right, which can span any, any cloud. Um, you know, what my team is responsible for is more in the consistent infrastructure space, and that's really all about how do we deliver a consist consistent compute, network, and storage service that spans uh, on-prem, multiple public clouds, and, and edge. So that's really where we're bringing that same VMware cloud foundation stack to all those different environments. Mark, I want to get your thoughts on what Pat Gelsinger said on the keynote. He said, modernize and migrate, or migrate and modernize. <laughs> he also mentioned live migration yes, is a big yes, feature. Yes. On the modernize and migrate, and migrate them out, basically pick one, mm -hmm, and people mm -hmm. are doing both. Right, right, right. What's he mean by that? Give some examples, and, and what's the impact of the customer? Is so, this just the behavior of the customer? Yeah, I mean, it, it varies a little bit based on what the customer is trying to accomplish, but you know, the one thing I'll say is that, you know, historically it was a little bit tough to have that choice, right? So, you know, the, the sort of the thought was, hey, for, I have to like refactor and replatform everything up front just to be able to get it to the public cloud, and then once it's there, I can sort of start to modernize. I think, um, and that can be a multi-year process, right? Yep. I think one of the really interesting opportunities that we've opened up for customers with VMware Cloud on AWS is you don't necessarily have to refactor everything um, just to be able to get to the public cloud. Uh, we can help them migrate to the public cloud very quickly without requiring any changes if they don't want to. And then when they're there, they can modernize at their own pace based on the needs of the business, right? And so, I think having that additional option is actually quite useful for customers that want to get to the cloud, qu cloud quickly, and then from there begin so to modernize. So two main paths, yeah. with migration and modernizes, yeah. the, the easiest one given the managed service. Yeah, yeah, and but that, you know, that being said, uh, I think also you see a set of customers that say, look, sort of digital transformation and modernization is my primary goal, right? And for them, by enabling some of these things like native Kubernetes as a service in vSphere and in VMware Cloud and AWS, by enabling this uh, AI and ML workloads with an NVIDIA partnership, for that class of customers, they can also just start with the modernization piece, right? Directly on the directly So on the, the migrate to modernize would be a lift and shift, essentially, and then, and then modernize. Mm -hmm. And that's what Amazon right. wants you to do. <laughs> But <laughs> you're giving customers a choice. We, we have an option. Yeah, no, I mean, look, at the end of the day, I think both VMware and AWS uh, believe strongly in um, understanding what customers are looking for and making sure we're delivering that value to them. And I think, um, you know, this is one of the compelling new options that we've enabled for customers, I think, with VMware Cloud on AWS, is that we could take a cloud migration project that would have previously taken three years, and we can do it in a few months. You know, Mark, I had a chance to talk to Carl Eschenbach um, uh, two weeks ago for the show. He came in for an interview with Sequoia Capital. Carl right. Eschenbach, former COO. Right. VMware had been there for years. He was part of the deal with AWS, mm -hmm. crafting that deal. We were talking about the moment in time where um, your stock price started to move up. That's October mm -hmm. 2016. <laughs> That's right when the deal was announced. Mm -hmm. Since then, the stock price has been up. For a lot of reasons, we've talked on theCUBE before. Mm -hmm. The question I have for you is, what have you learned? What, what surprises you from this relationship? Because one, the clarity was easy. Yeah. Be Cloud Air, no more. We, this is our cloud strategy, yeah. we own all in AWS yeah. and multi-cloud as it develops. Uh, certainly that clarify with customers. Right. But now that you're into the managed service, yeah. Yeah. what new things have popped out that might not have been on your radar? What did you expect? What are some surprises from this relationship from a customer behavior standpoint? Yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting question. So I think you know, in the early days we sort of had this concept of, hey, let's enable the full VMware capabilities on AWS. And we were sort of talking about it as a Tech, almost like as a tech, technical solution, right, and what, what we could enable. I think sort of what quickly became apparent is, hey, sort of behind that technical approach, there's actually some really compelling use cases here. And I think that, if I think back to two years ago, I don't think we fully anticipated um, how uh, compelling this cloud migration use case would be. I mean, I don't think we really realized internally within VMware how hard it was for customers before to do that. 
And, um, and I think customers didn't realize sort of how much easier and faster and lower cost that we could make it for them with this type of service. So I think that one, although we were maybe talking about it a little bit in the early days, I think it, it surprised me at least at how sort of broad based the customer interest was in that, um, in that type of capability. Any other broader market interests on things that were surprises or not surprises that are compelling? I mean, you know, the other thing, I wouldn't say it's a surprise per se, but um, I mean, I think the partnership with AWS has been fantastic. Right, I mean, we sort of went into it, I think, in the right way between Pat and Andy and focused on doing something meaningful together. Um, the relationship has only gotten sort of deeper and deeper over time. And um, one of the interesting things about it is that relationship spans not just engineering and product management and product strategy, which is sort of my neck of the woods, but also the marketing organizations, the sales organizations, the support organizations. So it's, um, it's, it's become, I think, a very deep partnership. Um, we're able to speak to each other very openly and trying to solve together the, you know, the problems that customers are putting in front of and us. And what's with right Outpost? What's the new update on Outpost? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, no news on Outpost uh, uh, today, obviously, but um, we're working uh, very closely with AWS to enable the VMware Cloud on uh, AWS Outpost model second half of this year. Um, and uh, the customer interest has just been fantastic, right? And it, in, in many ways, it's basically the exact same value prop of VMC on AWS uh, in terms in reverse. of, but, 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 but in reverse and anywhere you want, right? Like at, at your doorstep, right? Any edge environment, right. any data center. So. I got to ask you, about, back to the AWS relationship. Yeah. We're big fans of it, always have been, um, learned from both sides and, and yeah. believe in it. Having said that, um, EC2 is the bread and butter for Amazon, despite its hundreds and hundreds of services. That's where the revenue comes from. And compute, your compute business is you know, significant. So my question is, is it a zero sum game long term? Or, or when you look at the TAM, do you see all these other services that you, yeah. can, you can sell longer term providing you know, the growth engine for your respective companies? Or does this whole you know, rising tide lift both boats? What yeah. are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it's clearly rising tide lifts, lifts both boats. I mean, again, I'll, I'll, I was, bring it back to the customer, right? Because that's the way I like to view the world in AWS. Yeah, and you've got some evidence now. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, is it, is yeah it and I mean, what that? you're seeing is actually, I mean, if you take some of these customer examples, um, let me give you one uh, from the UK. So, uh, Stagecoach. I don't know if you've uh, heard about these guys, but they're a major, so they provide uh, transportation services in the UK um, and other countries as well. So they run a network of buses, trains, um, and uh, they're responsible for um, the transportation of three million commuters every day in, in, in the UK. So um, they have this really mission critical application that they're building that is basically responsible for uh, scheduling those buses and those trains and scheduling the conductors and the operators. So you can imagine this application is super mission critical for their business, right? And um, they chose to um, run that application on VMware Cloud on AWS. And one of the reasons they chose that is because we have a unique capability called stretch clustering. Sure. Which says, hey, even if there's an issue in one AWS AZ, we can restart that application in a second AZ. So there's a really good reason for the customer to choose it. But now, back to your question, right? If you think about the opportunity in that for both VMware and AWS, it's meaningful, right? You know, for us, we're selling the entire VMware cloud on AWS service to that customer across those two AZs for a mission critical workload that's core to their business. Um, for AWS, they're able to, of course, not only um, supply the infrastructure that we run on top of, but also as that customer looks to do more interesting things, they can attach additional native AWS services, right? So, you know, I think that's a great example where delivering value to the customer, and if you focus on that, the right things will kind of flow back to the companies that help make that and possible. Partnering helps you reduce friction and get yeah. to market faster. Thinking about the intense effort that both, you know, Pat's described, Andy Jassy's described, yeah, yeah. you've described, in terms of, of, of that partnership, that mm -hmm. deep engineering. Mm -hmm. Can you do multiples of those? Is, or is it, is it you, you don't because of the respect for the partnership? Or is it just too intense and it's too resource intensive? How many of these types of partnerships can you actually have? Well, I mean, I think Pat has said it pretty clearly, right? I mean, AWS is our primary and preferred uh, partner, right? And what we're doing with them is very unique, right? And it's something that we want to make sure that we have the right level of investment in and that we do uh, an amazingly good job of, right? And I think they feel the same way. And so having that focus together between the two companies, um, I think is what allow has allowed us to be, you know, uh, achieve some of the level of success we've had to date and we expect to do that going forward. Mark, final question for you. What's your objective this year in your 
business unit. What's your, what's your focus? Yeah. What are some of the things that you're working on that people should know about? Yeah, um, so uh, first of all, um, on VMware Cloud and AWS, just to wrap that up, I think the big uh, thing we're focused on going forward is really this modernization kind of piece of the story. How do we enable native Kubernetes in the service? How do we enable M, uh, ML and AI workloads in the service? How do we do a better job of connecting to all of the AWS services? So you're going to see a big kind of focus there. Um, beyond VMware Cloud on AWS, I mean, we're really excited about bringing this VMC model back on-prem, both with Dell and on top of AWS Outposts. I mean, the customer interest has been you know, fantastic, yeah. right? And you think about like, all the reasons that customers want to be able to run their applications you know, on-prem, data locality, latency, compliance, all sorts of really good reasons. We think that those services have really hit a sweet spot of that market. So IT is a managed service, what an interesting yeah, idea. Yeah. Don't you think, hey, <laughs> hey. Finally. <laughs> whole nother level, time, yeah. same game, whole new ball game, right? Absolutely. Mark, yeah. thanks for sharing your insight. Yeah. Congratulations on your success, and we'll be following it. Uh, VMware managed solution on AWS, certainly a big hit. Changed the game for the company, and now they're bringing a Dell EMC, among other potential business model opportunities for customers. As Cloud 2.0 comes, it's theCUBE's coverage. Live at VMworld 2019, we'll be right back with more from San Francisco after this short break. <laughs>